Hola, soy Jordi Zenzano, ingeniero en Meta, y junto a mis compañeros de Slavan y Amisha les vamos a presentar cómo funcionan las traducciones de IA. Hello, I'm Jordi Zenzano, Meta Engineer, and along with my colleagues, we're going to show you how IASCII translations work. Hello, I'm Jordi again, now for real. So, what you just saw is not uh, two recordings of myself, while one in Spanish and another one in English. Actually, the second one, the English one, is AI generated by Meta AI Translations, a feature that was just presented at MetaConnect one month, more or less one month ago. So, on this, we are going to talk about that in this talk. But first of all, I just wanted to acknowledge that this has been a quite complex project that needed of a lot of talent and a lot of Meta engineers to pull that off. So, I wanted to start this talk just thanking all of them for their passion and dedication to this project. So, thank you. Now let's start talking about how AI and media has been used in the recent years. So AI is not new in the media space. Since a few years ago, we started using AI models to inspect media. So for instance, there are models that can inspect an image or a video and tell us what is in, what is in that content. Or others that we can send an audio and they can generate or create the transcript of that audio. Those are the models that inspect the media. There are other ones that those are much more recent in the, in the AI world and in the media space, the ones that can generate. For instance, at Meta, we have MovieGen that you can send promo to MovieGen and they can generate a whole video or an image about what you are describing in that prompt. And finally, there are other type of models that modifies the media. So for instance, we can send a video or an image of this, in this case, this dog with some balloons and a table and the model can modify that image or that video and remove the balloons on the table. Or we can send an audio to the model, in this case in Spanish, and the model can output the same audio in English. So basically the a translation of that audio. As you can imagine, in this talk we will be focusing on those ones, the ones that modifies the media, and specifically the ones that can translate the media, and also, in this case, create a lip-synced version of that translated media. But before going into detail on how to do that, the translation and the lip syncing, I would like to describe the overall pipeline. This animation describes how this pipeline works. So everything starts with your awesome content. You have created a reel, in this case in English, that you want to upload and share with your friends. So first step is to upload this to our distributed storage, what we call OIL, that is specifically designed to handle media. Then we send an order to the data model that we want that media translated to, for instance, Spanish, that order is put into a queue. A few milliseconds after, some worker, in this case AI-enabled, picks up that command, downloads the media from OIL, reads that media, translates that media, creates the Spanish tab and lip sync content, and put that content into the distributed storage, into OIL. Then, on the consumption side, if some user connects with their device in English, we will send them the English version of that content. But if the device is set in Spanish, we will send them the Spanish content. So basically, this is the end-to-end -end pipeline on how AI translations work. And now my colleague Amisha will go into much detail on the audio translation workflow. Thanks, Jordi, for describing the end-to-end -end flow. Hi, my name is Amisha. I will now describe in detail how audio works. After that, my colleague Shavan will explain video pipeline. At the end, Jordi is going to come back and deep dive into some production data and talk about future landscape. Let's now look at audio translation pipeline. Seamless model sits at the core of our translation pipeline. Seamless model is a universal translator model. Meta released it last year. It currently supports six languages. It maintains prosody, emotions, and tone during translation to ensure the translated voice doesn't seem robotic and it matches with the source voice. With this model at the core, we have built audio translation pipeline. Let's look at the pipeline in more detail. Audio pipeline comprises of multiple steps and uses 10 plus models for different processing steps. As a first step, we decode the audio to get PCM signals out. Next, we run pre-processing stage, which has multiple steps like eligibility, sentence splitting. First step in pre-processing stage is to run eligibility checks to filter out unsupported streams. We have a bunch of eligibility criteria, one of them being language. For example, English to Hindi translation, 
fails the eligibility check as Hindi is not currently supported by Seamless. However, English to Spanish passes the check as Spanish is supported. We use language identification model to detect language of the input audio. Another eligibility criteria is speech presence. If there is no significant speech in the input audio, we fail the translation. We use audio classifier models to detect speech. The next step in pre-processing stage is sentence splitting. Seamless model is more effective for on smaller audio segments. That's why we added sentence splitting stage to split audio into smaller segments. There are various ways to split the audio. However, if we split audio mid-sentence, it can impact translation quality. So, we split audio around sentence boundary. We use bunch of models like automatic speech recognition to detect punctuation, full stop, etc. to mark sentence boundary. Additionally, we use voice activity detection model to detect pauses. Based on our algorithm around these signals, we then cut audio into different smaller segments. After pre-processing stage, we then call seamless model for translating segments. After translation, we have post-processing stage where we aggregate these translated segments together. There are a couple of challenges in post-processing stage. First being alignment. Some languages tend to be more verbose than others. Consequently, when translating from one language to another, the translated text often contains more or less words than the original speech. For example, I am going to the store in English is translated to boy a la tienda in Spanish. There are six words in English but just four in Spanish. If we don't do any adjustment, as you can see, translated audio will be much shorter and will cause AV sync issue. To ensure audio and video are in sync, we need to make sure translated audio length is same as source audio length, even though word or syllable count might differ. This was major challenge during post-processing. To solve this, we developed time-stretching algorithm to speed up or down the translated audio as needed. Additionally, algorithm ensured that it doesn't seem too rushed or too slow to make output more natural without changing audio length. Another challenge during post-processing is background noise. Seamless model was trained on clean data. It doesn't work well if input is noisy. So we had additional challenge to ensure background noise is extracted during pre-processing and then added back during post-processing. We developed in-house algorithm and models to achieve this. After the post-processing stage, we then mux the translated audio with the original video and finally generate ABR lanes for delivery. That's how the audio translation works end to end. Let's now look at the audio translation pipeline from safety angle. As any other model, Seamless can also have hallucination. It also can generate toxic translation, which can hurt user feelings and can cause bad user experience. In Meta, for any system, we make safety, integrity measures from the inception itself. So it was very important for us to ensure that the audio pipeline is safe for users to use. Let's see what safety measures we took to mitigate this concern. We added a bunch of proactive measures. For example, we did red teaming exercise on the model to understand how it responds to various inputs and when does it result into critical errors or toxic output. Apart from model understanding, we used Mintox to detect and mitigate toxic translation during inference time. Additionally, we added watermarking to inform users that the translation is AI generated. Lastly, we added provenance metadata to protect manipulation against bad actors. We added some reactive measures as well, like giving ability to users for deleting bad translation and providing feedback. With all these integrity changes, audio pipeline is changed as shown. With this, now audio pipeline is safe for end users to use. 
Let's now see how the translation looks with all these changes. Mi lengua materna es el español, pero fíjate, ahora también puedo hablar en inglés a través del doblaje automático de IA. This was the input video in Spanish language. Let's now see how the audio translation looked for this video. My native language is Spanish, but check it out. Now I can also speak in English through AI automatic dubbing. As you can see, the audio translation accuracy looks good. The tone expression also match. However, it doesn't look natural as lips are not following the audio. We need lip syncing to ensure better user experience. I will hand over to my colleague Shravan who will now talk about video. Thank you, Amisha. Hello, everyone. I'm Shravan, an engineering manager at Meta. And today, I'll go over lip sync infra and how we build the full multimodal experience and the challenges in taking it to production. Unlike traditional movie translations, where humans spent hours crafting sentences and carefully selecting words to match lip movements, sometimes at the expense of semantic accuracy, we face a different challenge. We need to translate content at scale within minutes across a wide variety of content. You might have noticed in previous slide, without lip sync, viewing experience is very jarring. Voice is a multimodal medium that requires synchronization between audio and visual elements. And lip sync is essential for creating a natural viewing experience for our users. Multi-video experience is a new format and it required significant changes across ingestion, processing, and delivery. And this involved orchestration of multiple models and which were developed independently to create a seamless and natural viewing experience for our users. As we have multiple assets that need to be delivered depending on the locale, we face a new challenge. How to ensure an optimal delivery experience for different regions. To address this challenge, we made changes to our playback stack to consider additional signals and language settings. This allowed us to optimize prefetch and develop a snappy experience for our users, regardless of their content, their location, and language preferences. In this slide, I'll break down the key components of lip sync and walk through step-by-step -step workflow. As a first step, the translated audio from voice model and original video is pre-processed for frame conversion and AV sync alignment to ensure translated audio and video generated by lip sync model are perfectly aligned. Although lip sync model is generalized, we further improve the quality of the quality per user with one shot training per real language and then run inference to generate lip sync frames. Lip sync video frames from previous step is muxed with translated audio, including ambience match and transcoded to ABR lane for an optimal delivery. At Meta, we prioritize safety and integrity in our product development lifecycle. We have implemented two key measures, visual watermark. A visual watermark has been integrated to inform users that a piece of metadata has been generated by AI. This watermark serves as a, as a clear visual indicator, ensuring transparency and awareness about the origin of media. The second step is provenance metadata. Provenance metadata is an emerging standard in the industry. We have incorporated to provide users with information about any modifications made to a piece of media using AI. To further protect against manipulation when sharing off platform, we have implemented these measures for videos downloaded from our platform. As you may have noticed, the end-to-end -end workflow is complex. Our team encountered several challenges while building the experience, which I would like to briefly highlight. The two key challenges are, how do we know we are improving? And how do we take model to production? Assessing the quality of audio translations is a complex task. That involves multiple dimensions, such as translation accuracy, which measures the correctness of translations, expressivity, how well are we imitating users on rhythm, voice similarity, and AV sync, are lip movements matching the target language. We run correlation studies with both reference and reference-based metrics to measure quality of translations, and both of them correlated poorly with human perception. 
This led us to heavily invest on subjective EVA and human ratings. As these ratings are highly subjective, we have to use complex statistical methods to remove variance and bias in the ratings for consistent results between model iterations. In addition, we had to heavily rely on subject matter expertise to analyze human ratings and create hypotheses for every model iteration to guide model development and tuning. As you can imagine, this is quite time consuming and difficult to scale. In conclusion, measuring model quality is a huge challenge and an open research problem, which requires further investments to make them reliable at scale. Original model was designed to be universal sentence translator and trained on short and clean voice samples with the best quality achieved with short audio segments. Whereas in production, we process billions of videos with content length, with different background noises, edits, skin tones, and faces with different facial characteristics. This led us to use several auxiliary models, which are easier to tune to complement main model and get the best quality out. Model orchestration in production is a complex process as it involves multiple models and steps. To avoid quality degradation, decoded and uncompressed frames are passed between various models. We had to carefully design the interfaces and workflows to avoid out of memory issues. Unlike the lab experiment, network is a shared resource in production. We have to ensure that we are not bogging down the network by sending uncompressed frames over network, which necessitated to build streaming interfaces. Now that we have covered the end-to-end -end design and steps involved in translation, my colleague Jordi will discuss how Autodub is being received by our users and where we go from here. Thank you. Hello again. So AI translations is just in the alpha stage, meaning that only a very few creators have access to it. But overall, the feedback that we are receiving has been quite positive, and we are very happy about that. So you can see some examples in the slide. About metrics, we cannot share a lot of metrics, as I said, because it's, a, it's, a, it's very recent. We are still it's a very recent feature that we are still gathering them. But some data that we can share is that we have seen a quite meaningful increase in impressions. That's quite common sense, because now the media is available in more languages, so more people have access to it. And as I said, we, we, we saw that impressions increase. About eligibility, so 90% of the media that was sent to translate and lip sync, we were able to do it. So we detected that the proper voice and we were able to translate it and lip syncing. And what next? So what are the next steps? So we want to improve our system, obviously. So how are we planning to do that? First of all, platformizing it. We don't want to build one off. So we believe that AI and media is here to stay. So we want to create a system where we can onboard new use cases faster and iterate over the current ones faster too. So we want to build this solid platform that enables media, media AI use cases, new media AI use cases. We also want to make it faster. So reduce the, the time that our users are waiting to get that result, that translation back. And we want, we want to create a better integration with our monitoring and, and experimentation system. And all of this with the, to the final goal of improving the user experience. And specifically to improve user experience, we are planning to expand language support, so support more languages, input and output, support reels with music track, most of the reels that, we are, uh, that are uploaded to Meta as a, a music track, so we want to support translations for those two. We want to support multiple speakers, so translate with their own voices, so more, two or three people in the reel, so translate their voices, transfer their sentiment, etc. And finally, last but not least, improve the overall quality. That means better translation accuracy, better sentiment transfer, less noise on the translations, as I said, etc. And that's it. That's it for this talk. So thanks a lot for listening, and we are really... Looking forward to your questions in the Q&A. So thanks again.